what is broken about the mental health or mental health care system in Australia and, and what kind of gap are you trying to fill? I think, unfortunately, um, and this is something very, very passionate about, uh, quite a lot is broken with the system. It's, it's a very, very broken system um, and, it, and it's becoming more run down. I think where we were in, in COVID was actually in some ways a lot better than where we are today, which is which is terrifying in some respects. Absolutely. So, for example, one, one of the biggest things that's broken with the system at the moment is the way Medicare rebates um, psychology. Uh, firstly, uh, first of all, the rebates are capped at 10 sessions, which is absolutely mind-blowing because, A, by putting a 10-session cap on Medicare, um, you're basically telling people that, hey, you know, you, expect to get better in 10 sessions, which, which is an unrealistic expectations, particularly, expectation, uh, particularly for people that are, um, that are dealing with more complex presentations. So, for example, it's very difficult, very, very difficult to treat something like trauma in 10 sessions. And when you sort of get to the end of those 10 sessions, then that, that rebate goes away and that rebate's about $92.90 at the moment. It's gone up a dollar or $2 from last year. Um, but it's, it's very difficult for people to access mental health care when they're paying full freight for a session. And the other thing that's wrong with the, with the way, one of the other many things that's wrong with the system is that the rebate's so low. You know, a rebate at $92.90 is not, um, it's not enough. It's not particularly for people that are um, from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, with the current economic climate now, we're seeing people just forego treatment altogether. And that's a net negative for society when you have people, particularly with more serious uh, mental health concerns, not getting treatment because A, private practice is becoming increasingly um, out of reach for them and B, the public system is so clogged that there, there are some ridiculous wait times at the moment. And in some instances, you're basically telling somebody with a serious mental health concern that, hey, sorry, we're full in the public system right now. Please come back in 12 months. And for somebody in that position, that's that's not that's not an option. So it's it's the number of sessions that are rebated under Medicare. It's the amount that's rebated under Medicare. It's even what Medicare applies to. So, for example, at the moment, Medicare applies to things like counselling sessions, which is great, but it doesn't apply to... Um, psychological assessments. So for example, somebody who wants to get tested for ADHD gets very minimal support from Medicare. They might get, you know, if there's an initial consultation session, they might get $92.90 back from that. But for the rest of the assessment, they don't get much help. Um, and that's why there's a, partially, I guess, there's, that's why there's now a Senate inquiry into ADHD and the way that's assessed. And, and one of the questions that's sort of posed by that um, is what can Medicare do to, to better support it? And, and there's a heap of stuff. That's that's one thing Medicare can do. But, yeah, it's just absolutely mind-blowing that we sort of tell people, um, hey, you can get 10 sessions rebated, but when it comes to getting assessed, which an assessment is typically needed for your more serious presentations, sorry, can't help you. And I can speak to that as well. Like, So I am seeing a psychologist and I'm doing the mental health care plan and I think I'm five sessions in and my stuff is more trauma related in the past of like going through childhood traumas and things like that. And I'm at session five and we're just like skimming the surface, so to speak, of of what there is in uh, what's involved, like going through the memories, going through all these different things. So session number five and we're only skimming the surface. Um, now, I don't know how many sessions there's going to be, but I think that... Um, to be honest with you, I think psychology is a, a lifelong thing. It's not like a, and by lifelong, I don't mean like every single week. What I specifically mean is that there's always things going on in people's lives. And to have someone there who's objective, not connected to the outcome of how you feel in the sense of like, they, they're not, there's no skin in the game for them in the sense of like, they're not connected to it is, is so important. And in fact, I would love to see someone I think for the rest of my life, at least every month or every three months, maybe. So I, I, I hear that. And for me, like financially, it's okay. But it's like, if that wasn't there, like the incentive to, to look after mental health would be far less. It's very nice to have that there. Um, so I, I hear that on the mental health care side of things. Absolutely. I think for some people, it's even that, that security, right? Like having that, that in a way, that safety net where I might, as a, you know, 
as a client, I, you know, I might not need sessions today, but knowing that I can go back in a year or two if something pops up or if I get these external stressors that change the way I'm feeling or the way that I'm sort of processing things, having that safety net is is a huge thing. It's it's a very overlooked component around what happens after therapy. Um, but again, uh, you know, for some people and for a lot of people, in fact, most people I'd say, um, that affordability question is really, it's real. It's especially with the way um, the economic circumstances are at the moment. And as an example, during COVID, um, that Medicare, that, that cap on Medicare um, rebates was increased to 20 sessions. And that's only been rolled back last year, um, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Thanks for watching this clip of the Getting Mental podcast. If you like this clip, check out the full episode here or more clips here.